delighted to see so many people, uh, both local people and people who have travelled far and wide, uh, and particularly the circle of friends of Gunther Blaschau who are here. We're going to try and keep this informal, and not too many long speeches, so Jan, only a few minutes. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, but but we, we really want to uh, welcome you all, and I'm delighted because uh, to welcome uh, our own uh, Mayor, uh, Councillor Sue Gray, who's just going to give a, 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 a quick uh, welcome to you all. So Sue, Councillor, Mayor of Thurrock, Sue Gray. Good morning, and uh, our guest in the history of Thurrock. Not everybody could tell you this, but Thorough Borough motto is by attends to all the people of the world. And I think this reflect, reflects the importance of the River Thames and in particular Tilbury and its role in British history. Thorough has a unique, unique heritage, is central to the community's pride in the borough. Thorough heritage plaques remind us of this. Tilbury and the Tilbury Docks history are scattered through local history books. Some examples that I find interesting are that Tilbury Docks received the Empire Windrush ship from Kingston, Jamaica in 1948. In, 19, in 1588, Queen Elizabeth I visited her troops at Tilbury Port and gave her famous speech I know I have the body of a weak and feeble woman, but I have the heart and stomach of a king, and a king of England too. Throughout history, Tilbury has had connections with famous people, including Charles Dickens, Daniel Defoe, Ramsay MacDonald, Samuel Pepys, and Mark Twain, to name but a few. And Gunther, and I hope this is pronounced properly, Blushar, his daring, determined and courageous act in Tilbury back in 1915 is very worthy of receiving a plaque, a heritage plaque. It stands to remind us all that if you want something strongly enough and persevere despite the odds, you can achieve quite rem remarkable fates. Very wondering plaques. Our heritage plaque is a scheme to try and informally uh, inform our communities of interesting historical facts. So when they're in the pub the next night, they go, do you know what happened here? You know, I never knew that, and whatever. And, and we have millions of facts, and, and, and we use the museum, and my role as a heritage officer is to produce these plaques. Uh, as already said, my name is Gary, and I'm the president of the Circle of Friends of Kunta Pruschel. We have this U in our language. But you don't have. No, no. And the French, you're not alone, all the others are also struggle, which is crucial. Um, well, when Jan sent me an email about three years ago and asked me to support the initiative here in, in England, in Great Britain. In, in Great Britain, is that okay? Yeah, by the way. Well, England, but we are England now. Yeah, Great Britain. To, <laughs> <laughs> to, to support this initiative. And I was more than happy to do so. And um, it was at the very beginning, and uh, <coughs> a lot of ideas coming up, and you're never quite sure what the day then, at the end of the day, becomes reality. But in this case, thanks to Peter and Victor, uh, now I'm here, standing on British soil as a journal. And I'm very proud, and it really means a lot to me to be here. Thank you very much for this invitation. Uh, well, Gunther Pluschel, born in 1886 in my county, where I was born in the north of Germany. And uh, after having lived in, in Rome a while, he then made his military career. And he became quite soon uh, one of the first aviators uh, in the German Navy, but the Navy had an aviation section at this time. Um, and then he ended up in what was your Hong Kong. We had the similar construction as well in Germany, but we lost it. Um, and he was there the only aviator in this little trade colony, as we call it, um, Tsing Tao, or Kiao Chao. And as we all know, on August 1st, 2014, the Great War started. And uh, so just a few weeks later, the, the Japanese, asked by the British to do so, uh, sent an ultimatum to the German uh, in Tsing Tao and said, could you please get up and move away, go home to Germany, and we don't like to do what you have anymore. Uh, and of 
course, because they were Prussians, they said, we will never surrender. You know, that Winston Churchill, that's what they played. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so they said, we will not do so. And from that point in time, Prussia as an aviator was very important for them, just to, to see all the movement of the Japanese troops. They had to surrender on November the 5th, uh, November the 6th in the morning, on that very morning, Prussia was asked to use his airplane and escape towards China, and he made this daring escape around the world, which ended up, as you call it, Gibraltar, where the Brits kept him. And he said, well, I'm, I'm, I'm not German, I'm Swiss, I'm Swiss. And they said, well, sorry, give me a break, there's so many Swiss coming through, uh, we don't believe it. So they grabbed him, they put him, and he was all of a sudden a prisoner of war. And they sent him to Dormington Hall. And uh, this was a nice old car, a Manson actually, which was prepared for the, for the German uh, prisoner, for the officers, for the German prisoner of war officers. But uh, because of his character, he said, no, I don't want this, I want to fight for my fatherland. And he started his escape. And, uh, well, and a very important uh, part of this escape was, took place here, where he finally, on the other side, made it back. <laughs> And uh, he was compared to other, and when he came back to Germany, he was a hero. He had this kind of battle name, the aviator of Tsingdao. And, uh, but he compared to others, <coughs> he, he was a kind of a, you know, it was more uh, like a boy's own story, like a, you would call it a die-hard trip, you know. And he had not this hard-nosed attitude. He was more, he had a smiling face, he had a tattoo, and uh, he was someone who really uh, wanted to do, go his own way. And this is something we, I think we all admire, because this kind of, uh, you know, characteristics of personality, uh, this is remarkable. And also he was um, someone who always took it with a kind of a good sense of humor, the whole trip, the whole thing. And this was one of the reasons, because he was not a really kind of steely guy, he was not steely Gunther. And that's why um, so after 33, when the Nazis took over, he was not their man. They had other heroes. And he was not, let me call it, bloody enough, actually. Um, and then after the Second World War, the Germans had other problems. And in, in the late 80s, the early 90s, then somehow I discovered him. And then we found out and we discovered him. Well, and uh, we found the circle of friends. We, by the way, we, we uh, uh, his grave is in Berlin. There. Actually, that's the story. Thank you very much to me. It is very, again, <laughs> I can't uh, repeat this often enough. It does mean a lot to me to be as a German here, to stand here and see and be a part of a of a project where you honor the former enemy. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> Which, of course, we still have and still use to commute to London backwards and forwards. He arrives at Tilbury Station. Uh, and, and one of the, the, I think one of the most amusing stories is he goes into the Tilbury uh, Workmen's um, Club, a club to have a meal, and the manager spots him and, and sort of puts his hand and says, oh, uh, are you a member? <laughs> uh, well, he doesn't want, to, doesn't want to sort of, you know, rouse too much suspicion. He says, well, no, I'm, a, I'm an American sailor. I've come off the uh, Ohio, it's in the docks. I haven't got my paperwork on me. And the manager says, well, well, that's okay. He says, for three shillings, you can become a member of the Tilbury Working Men's Club. <laughs> and he does, and he gets a little red ribbon put onto his buttonhole to show he's paid up. Uh, and so this three shillings. And, and I just thought it would be rather nice to give you a little rebate, because um, this is a two shillings and six weeks. Because <laughs> he was only there for two days, so I, I think it's only <laughs>
because he's not really well known in, in Germany and not even for a naval officer, which I find a bit scary. So I, I read a lot, thanks to the internet, it's quite easy to, to, to read something about him. And then um, it rang a bell between, okay, yes, I heard about the aviator of, of Tsingtao, the Flieger von Tsingtao, like we said. And um, so, um, as it is, all our um, embassies in our countries do not have enough money to, to found and support things. And so I searched further on, and then I found the point of science, Bruchot, and we established the contact. And so finally, roughly three years later, we are here today. And I'm, I'm very thankful for all of you, um, having done a lot of work, a lot of research, set up very perfectly, you managed to have wonderful summer weather here, which is uh, not for granted, I know. And um, thank you for doing a thing which is probably not quite common. And uh, you all know the saying, I don't really have to mention it to you, but you know these, don't mention mm -hmm. and sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it is still like this in Germany. <coughs> also, when I started three years ago and asking for like, well, the Brits are about to set up this and that in these events, the first answer was, oh, do we really have to commemorate that? And do we really have, it? it's 100 years ago, let's and I said, no, we have to do it because they will commemorate either. And if you don't want them to celebrate everything, then you probably have to show up and then we do something like commemoration. We are looking for the spirit of reconciliation and being here and seeing that a former enemy, like Gerhard said, is being remembered here. And I guess also a bit acknowledge what he has done because it is really a dare uh, or action he has done. That's really a wonderful sign of reconciliation and I thank you very much for giving the opportunity to me to be here and again for setting up everything. Thank you very much. Thank you. I also have informed the, the son who is living, still living in Canada and the grandsons of Pusha about this event. And uh, occasionally he sent me this letter and I'm more than pleased to read it now. And this is a letter from the grandsons. On behalf of our families here in Canada, we would like to send greetings to everyone on this great occasion. We are all honored to be a part of this family and we are thrilled about the memorial commemorating Hunter Pluchot's daring escape from Donington Hall a century ago. Here in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Gunther Pluchot, the son of Gunther Pluchot, is living in an assisted care facility and will soon be celebrating his 97th birthday. He is a proud father of two sons, Michael and Lloyd, who are both married, living and working also in Winnipeg. He has two great grandchildren, Eli and Willie Vale, who live in the Toronto area. Gunther was married for more than 55 years with his wife Rosemary, who passed away in 2003. This celebration recognizes not only the courage and tenacity of one soldier but all soldiers, regardless, regardless of their origins and the sacrifice they have made during terrible times. The Pluchel family is very proud of our heritage and are grateful and humbled by this recognition. Thank you to all. So those with cameras, um, although we will set some photographs up once we've done the formula on Valley, and I will invite Gunther Plachow up to come forward, because he's hiding in the back there, I notice, <laughs> um, for, for a, a, a spoofy sort of shot with you. Which, and I hope you'll send some photographs to the Canadian families and, and say, um, you know, we're delighted they know about it and perhaps see a bit of evidence. So, uh, Mayor, if you'd like to, uh, and, and you'll have, if you'd like to hold either end of the thing, then it's just simply pulling it back and uh, officially un unveil. take some formal photographs. Yeah.